Good afternoon, everyone. Let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. Abba Father, which art in heaven, uh, thank you for traveling mercies on our way there uh, to do the baptism and on our way back here. As we spend a moment together this afternoon before we go to us uh, um, different places, go to our home, we pray that you would continue to be with us. And we pray that uh, you would help us to have a little taste of heaven uh, because uh, we, we need that. We need that reassurance that we are indeed a pilgrim, that we have uh, an inheritance, and it, which is a, a heavenly one. And I know as we come together as believers, we can really uh, taste that moment when we shall unite or reunite in the kingdom of God, where there shall be no more tears, no more sorrows, no more pain. Father, we pray that you bless this uh, worship service hour. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to preach another sermon. Uh, I want to uh, spend just a few moments with you, especially after such a wonderful day, a wonderful Sabbath that we've, we've had. Uh, we had been able to, to gather here today to worship God, uh, to study the Word of God together. We had communion service, and then we had uh, unexpectedly five baptism. Five baptism. Now, one of the reasons why I said uh, unexpectedly, because I was not supposed to be here in the first place. Uh, this is part of my testimony. I'm going to give each one of you, especially those who... Uh, went to the water baptism and the opportunity, if you want to, if you want to, to share something. But let me share a little bit of my testimony. I'm still wondering why I am here today. But I remember it was Thursday, I think it was. I posted a video. I think I posted a video uh, Wednesday evening or Thursday evening. I don't remember for sure which day it was. And then in the video, I mention that I am in London. The reason why I mention I, I was in London is because I started doing a series while I was in West Virginia in the U.S. And I was, so, the following day, I had promised to do a part two of, of that series the following day. But I didn't get to do that because I was traveling, which was, again, unexpectedly, I wasn't planning to come to, to London, at least to come back to London, I was supposed to be on my way to Florida. But fast forward to either Thursday, I think it was, uh, after I posted that video, and then I remember somebody had left a comment, at least two comments maybe, somebody from Grenada. I remember reading the comment. Now, I kid you not. I remember reading the comment after I posted a video announcing that I was going to go to Grenada, Jamaica, and Trinidad. And I remember the comment says something about, I can't believe it. Uh, you're coming to Grenada. I was just in Grenada, and uh, I wanted to get baptized, and, and now I'm in England. So Thursday of this week, after I said that in that video that I'm in London, and I remember that comment. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I need to go back to the comment section of that video to find the comment and to see if I can get in touch with the person. But I, uh, there was just a name there, and then I don't remember. I got so busy, I got distracted. And then later on, I got a phone call from Sister Linda. Email. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the correction. It was an email. I got an email. Yes. And I said I could not believe it. It was the same person that I was, I was trying to find their contact information. And then they contacted me. And then there was somebody else, um, one of the sisters who was here. Uh, uh, oh, no. He, 
it was you, right? Yeah, you sent me an email as well. And he watched the video. I didn't make an official announcement, as I usually do. Uh, just in passing, I mentioned it in one of the videos. And then they responded. I said, wow. God works in mysterious ways. You see, I had my plan, but God has his plan. You see, that's one of the reasons why I always make myself available. I don't know how many times I've done this. Uh, in my uh, ministry, uh, whenever I make plan to do something else, but then I hear a voice telling me something different, and then I just obey it, not knowing exactly why I, uh, why, uh, I did it, but then you will never know, as we read from Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 3, you will never understand the will of God or the power of God or, or what God can do or what God had planned to do until you obey. Until you obey. Those men did not see, physically see, how God was going to deliver them from the lion's den. But they obey regardless. They obey. And after they did that, they experienced the power of God. And so God had a plan well, I had my plan, but when I surrender to his plan, now I see why. Amen. And I give God all the glory. Amen. With that in mind, I invite each one of you, but especially those who uh, got baptized today, if you would like to share something, it's up to you. If you don't feel pressured, I'm not putting you under pressure to say anything. But if you would like to say something, even the others as well, uh, you, you're welcome to come up. Up, up here and uh, share your testimony. Pastor, yes. I, I, if that's, that's okay with you. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think that um, to shed some meat okay. on, the, on the bones, of, on the back of the bones for where you came sure. from. So, so, yeah, Pastor's quite correct. Um, I, 2016, mom, my mom has a stroke. We, we're from Huddersfield in, in West Yorkshire. She has a stroke in the, in, the, in, in the Caribbean, in a place called Caracu, Grenada, to be precise. She's brought back to England. She comes straight to my house. I take a year out at work, and my, my employers work very well with me, and I think that's all by the grace of God. And they give me that year off to make up a decision whether I want to retire, take early retirement, or come back to work. As far as I was concerned, my mom was my priority to look after. I took early retirement, and God just worked in, in ways that I just couldn't understand, but he did. And I looked after my mom in my home. Come 2019, we decided, uh, with mom, for her to go to, back to Karakul. My plan was that she would to make her comfortable and that she would be able to maybe spend her last days there. And that's exactly what happened. Um, the testimony has to be cut short a lot, but it's just, it, I went through hell on earth while I was in Karakul looking after my mom. Um, and on top of that, COVID happened. So my husband and I, up until seven months ago, hadn't seen each other for four years. Because when I left, three, four years, when I left in 2019, my son, our son came with me. He spent six months with me and mom, settling us in, in, in the Caribbean, and he had to come back for an eye operation. Come April 2020, April, May, him, my husband, and my son, due to come back down, come to, down to meet me in Karaku with my mom, on the day that they're due to travel out, lockdown, right? So we knew we weren't going to take the jab, and we're praying all the time, like, how on earth do we meet up with each other again? But we knew we was never going to take the jab. So they had a policy that said that if you didn't take it, you couldn't come, come into the country. So... We, we just made up our mind, we weren't going to take the job, and we're going to pray, we're going to trust in God and leave it in his hand. So, um, 
mom ended up passing away in 2021. During the time that I was with her, my faith increased. I became closer, especially when I was like no earthly help. There was no earthly help. People who you knew, who she knew, who she spent time with, she grew up in this place, they turned like beasts. People became like, like the, the, the love of um, the um, wax coal, you know, what the Bible talks about. Yeah. That was what we were seeing yeah. at that time. People wouldn't call, they wouldn't, they wouldn't come, they wouldn't, they just, and I was on my own. And I had to get down on my knees to cry, cry and, and sigh, you know, to get the help I need. And God brought me through. Amen. He brought me through by his grace and, and his love and his care. And I'm a living testimony. I know God is real. Amen. And it was from that my faith increased. And I began to, well, we were watching Pastor Emmanuel. Him up there and me down in the Caribbean. And we watched him and he was the only one that was making the loud cry. He was the only one who was advocating against people taking this poison. I remember he called it the poison. He called it the pandemic and the shamdemic. <laughs> and when, when I began to talk in that language down there, I was like, people was like looking at me like I'm funny. You know, this, who are you talking this nonsense? Because they all, they hook, line and sinker. They, they believed in it and they took it and now people are dying. Young and old down there are dying. They are injured badly and there's no coming back for a lot of them, right? So um, fast forward, mom passes away. All that time in between there, I know that God had a hand. Jesus had a hand on me. And it was him that brought me through where, to where I am today. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. You know? But he brought me through. And in that time, we kept watching Pastor Emmanuel. He was so inspiring. The message that he was talking about, the, the you know, the loud cried mes message, the three angels message, it was, it's, it, it, it was just what we needed as a, as a family. And we listened to him, we took in that word, we went to the, to, the, to, the, um, to the scriptures, and our faith increased. And every day I kept praying and asking that God continue to increase my faith, bring me closer to Jesus. And I started to pray and ask, I said, you know, please, whatever, don't, don't let me die without me being baptized, right? I was praying to see my husband again. I was praying to be baptized before I, I took my last breath. And one of the things I, I said, me and my, my husband Kelvin was saying, that we would like for Pastor Emmanuel to, um, to, to bless us, to, to baptize us. And it seemed like it was like impossible, but I kept praying. I did it every day, I kept praying. And I said, God, it's your will. I leave it in your hands. I'm praying and I'm asking. And you know, things started happening funny. So mom passed and I'm, I was in the grip of a satanic demonic attack from a number of people in that small island in my village, our family. It's got to a point where there's a lot of court issues that had to happen just because of some people taking cutlass after you, wanting to end your life and all kind of stuff. Real demonic stuff, right? And prayers is what brings me here today. Amen. Strength is from God, Jesus, is what's brought me where I am today. I'm a living testimony of that. And in that prayer and everything, I, I remember Kelvin finally coming down to... Um, Karakou. After all these years, in September he came down and we met each other for the first time in all that time. We decided to go to, to Tobago as a family, myself, my son and our son and him and um, Kelvin. We went there 
And lo and behold, I'm seeing this um, post that's saying pastors coming to Trinidad and Tobago. And, and then I look, and I, so I'm like elated. And then I look at the date, and it turns out that the day um, before, the day after we were leaving is when pastor is coming. We're going back to Grenada, and then from Grenada, we're going back to the UK. So I'm like, this cannot happen. Pastor's not supposed to come to the Caribbean. Because what I did was I, I sent a post um, when I, he was in different parts of um, America and stuff. And, and even when he was in London, I said to Kelvin, this was back in 2020, I said to Kelvin, call him if you can and ask him if he can come up to Huddersfield or something so that you, know, you can connect with him. So Kelvin called Pastor and they had that conversation and Pastor was saying to him, well, if, you, if, if he knows that if there's a group of people, a small group of people up there that he can connect with, the possibility is that he could come. So we're sort of thinking, what, what can we do? What can we do? Anyway, after that, uh, Pastor then um, posts out later after, you know, sometime after now, he posts this thing, we're in Tobago, and we realize that we're going to miss him. So I post, I post something in there again, and I'm saying, you know, Pastor, what's going on? You know, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I really want to get baptized, you know, I, 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 I see that I've been, I've, I see that you, you are coming to this place and I'm, we're leaving. Myself and my family is leaving and we're going back to Grenada. Come to Grenada, I'm saying to him. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, we go back to Grenada. We spend the time, the few little time we had. And then I'm coming back to England after four years or so away. So I come back to England and then I see a post out saying, pastor's going to Grenada. I'm like, what's going on? So I, I then send another um, post in the thing and I'm saying to him, what's happening? You coming to Grenada, I'm no longer in Grenada. You, were in, you, were come, you come to, to um, Trinidad. I am not in, in to, um, Trinidad anymore. We go to Grenada and you're coming to Grenada now and I'm in the, and I'm in the UK. So I'm saying, I, I, I say, I, I pray that I'm leaving it all in God's hand. I think I said something like, I'm, I'm going to pray and, and God will decide. And you know, I, in all that time, I kept praying and I'm praying and we're talking and I'm saying, we are saying to each other, we would like Pastor Emmanuel to be the one. But if it's not possible, God, then whoever, it's okay. But let your will you let your wills be done. You decide and we'll follow whatever you say. We'll accept whatever you say. I pray and I continue praying. Next thing I know, my husband's saying to me on, on, on Wednesday or Thursday night, he's saying, I've seen a post from Pastor saying he's in London. I said, no way. I, I said, there's no chance he's going to be. You, you just... You, you must be talking about another Pastor Emmanuel. I've seen another man saying he's a Pastor Emmanuel <laughs> online, on, on YouTube. It's not the same one, never. So I'm looking for this, this video to see this announcement, and I can't find it anywhere. Wow. Hours I spent looking for it. No, I didn't know. I didn't know because he, he told me about it, and then he left and he went to work. And then I'm like all day looking for this thing, and I can't find nothing. He comes home. I can't wait for him to come home. When he comes home, I'm saying to him, you, you know, there's nothing. You've made a mistake. And then he goes through all his video, his posts and stuff, and he comes across the, video, the thing, and he says, listen. And he opens it up, and then you start to speak. And it's like, well, of course, because you haven't even announced anything. You're talking about Ted Wilson in this thing, and in, when we go into it, then he's, he's saying he's coming to London. I'm like, yes, we go, this time we're going to do it. And Pastor, I'm telling you, you cannot imagine the amount of things I went through in order to get an email for you. Because every time I tried to go into to get a contact number, something went wrong. Something was happening. Something wouldn't let me through to make the connection. And then hours later, bam, I get a connection. I get an email. I send it through. And I said, you know what? I'm not sending one. I'm sending five. In fact, I think I sent about seven. 
I smiled while I did it. I was, I'm overloading him, and he must listen to me. <laughs> I just wanted to say something quickly. The video in question, which was uh, Thursday. Yes. Uh, Thursday. Um, Wednesday. Wednesday night? Wednesday night, okay. Uh, I've been jet lagging, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned that I was in London, but I was, like she said, I was talking about Ted Wilson. I was surprised when I saw it. I was in Yeah, and then all of a sudden, something came, that, that thought came to my mind. I said, okay, mm -hmm. all right, let me just say it. And I said it. Mm -hmm. But I had no plan on making an announcement that I was in London. I just said it. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I, I do believe that is the power of prayer. I believe that is God working. In my mind, in Kelvin's mind, we said the same thing. We said, this is God working. Because there's no way on earth Pastor should have been in London. He was never planning that. He was going to go to Florida. We were, we were keeping a, 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 a watch out, a monitor on him. And we knew he was going to Florida. And then he would go to the Caribbean. He was going back to um, Jamaica, to Trinidad, and Grenada. So there's no way he's going to be in London. And it turns out he's in London. I said, God... I drop on my knees and I said, God, thank you. Please make a way, make it, make it possible for me to, and my husband and my son to go. During the week, my son has a terrible accident with a power saw. Wow. The, the, the saw um, breaks off the part of it and it, it hit the blade and it hits him here. He could have gone there, he could have gone there, he gone there. And again, I dropped to my knees and I said, thank God, thank you, Lord. He could have died, so thank you for keeping him alive. You have a plan for him. So my son, if you see him, he looks like Quasimodo. He's got this, his, his head, his forehead is this big, and he's got this stitch across. They've had to put plastic surgery. It's a deep, deep wound. But thank God he's alive. So with that, he couldn't come. But if he... If he, that hadn't happened, he would have been here with us. And who knows, he may have been baptized. Who knows? But I'm saying all this to say that God works. That is the testimony I have. God works. This is not, this is not accident. It is not coincidence. This is God at work. I firmly believe that. And let me tell you, just before I finish, last night, no, during the week, the amount of stuff that happened. On the M25 last night, three places, they closed the M25 down, and we spent the whole night more or less on the M25. Right from get onto the motorway, all kind of things start happening. We're not sure if they've taken us, five, they've taken our, um, you know, the flash cameras five times coming down, the, the stuff that was happening on that motorway was just unbelievable. We couldn't see no reason for it. We ended up in these dark, dark places, going round in circles, lost our way. Diversion, that's not even, they're not even putting signs for diversion. They're just saying diversion, and we don't know where the diversion is going. And we just kept praying. I kept praying. I said, God, you know why we're here. You want our souls more than the devil. Amen. And you're stronger than Satan. Amen. And you will make a way where there's no way, where Amen. there doesn't seem to be a way. Amen. And just, just get us where we... So I think we must be coming about 4 o'clock. <laughs> and we didn't sleep. So I'm, I haven't slept. And, and through this, this morning, I was struggling to, to stay awake. But I, I am so glad to be here Amen. and to be fellowshipping with all you. See, all you. <laughs> Thank you so much. All you have been fantastic. And don't mind, we, we are a bit quiet. <laughs> I'm not quiet. He's quiet. <laughs> but thank you so much. And Pastor, thank you so much. God is at work. And that's why you're here. And when, when I spoke to Pastor, Pastor, when I sent these five to seven emails, and Pastor rang me like a few minutes later, in fact, I, post some, I did post some comments in there. Please, somebody, I said, can, can you let me have a number for pastor? <laughs> and nobody's responded. I said, another one. Nobody's responding. I thought, well, I have to take things in my hand. And then pastor rang. And, I said, and he said to me, he says, I don't know why I'm in London. I'm not supposed to be here. But he says something, 
has impressed upon me to be here. That's what he said to me the very first time we spoke. And he said, I don't know why I'm here, but I know that God is at work because I was impressed to come to London. And, and that, is, that is my testimony. So thank you for listening. I am blessed. Give God the glory. Yes, um, my name is Kelvin, and as Linda says, everything she was saying is true. And, um, well, basically, my parents were Seventh-day Adventists. I used to go to the Adventist church when I was younger and stopped going. And um, basically, I've always had the connection, you know, and I've come back to God. And I've said, the day that I baptize, I am not going to let my Savior down. I am not, I am not turning back. I am this, I'm on this road until I die. Amen. That's my testimony. Amen. Happy Sabbath, one and all. Oh, God, God is good. Amen. He's a merciful, kind, and loving Father Amen. to all of us. Amen. My journey has been like us all. There's a story to tell. Amen. Won't go into that. But with Pastor Emmanuel, I've been watching him for quite a while. And um, he speaks the truth. I watch Pastor Enriquez as well and a few others. But concerning the pandemic, Pastor has been on the ball. I knew about what was coming from about 2009 by reading a book, um, Vaccination Crisis, of, uh, from Vance Farrell, Harvest Time books. And I knew, I knew what was coming. I knew it from then. And when it came, I was not surprised. I was telling other people over the years what was coming, but they didn't believe me. I gave them that particular book. Could I? Yes, This particular book, Vaccination Crisis, Vance Farrell, about the history of, of, of the vaccine, how they've manipulated it, the Jesuit order, from the 18th century, basically, and um, how despotic and tyrannical they are to bring their plans through. Anyway, um, with my story, how, how I got baptized today is absolutely incredible because I didn't plan it. <laughs> I didn't plan it at all. I just heard, like Linda there and Kelvin, about that you know, on the video that pastor was coming, coming here. And um, I thought, oh, I have to come. Um, for years back, he's been coming here and I haven't seen him and I've been watching him all these years. So I made it my duty. My wife wasn't well um, yesterday and so I thought I probably would not be able to make it. Um, but I prayed overnight to see um, how, how she would feel in the morning. And she felt all right, so I said, all right. Left my daughter, 16-year-old daughter, with her and I said, I'll come. Um, they were planning to come with me as well. Um, well, my daughter was, but not my wife. But um, when I came here and listening to Pastor and the impression I have that I need to get rebaptized in present truth, Amen. all the years I've been, when I got baptized in '92, I didn't understand fully the implications of what I was getting into. Um, over the years, I've studied a lot, and, and now I understand by how oh God is good. And um, so I knew I had to get, been watching pastor baptizing people from when he went to Australia. And I thought, yeah, I would like to get baptized in the river myself or in the sea. But it, obviously, <laughs> he ain't going to have me here. <laughs> so when I was sitting there, I... The Holy Spirit impressed upon me that yeah, you should ask him to get baptized. So I did, and I'm, I'm glad I did. And um, I said, well, 
All glory to God. Amen. Thank you. If anyone wants a copy, I, next time I'm coming, I'll be bringing some. It's very, very good. Before I say anything, I just want to give God all the praise and all the glory, and I'm very, very happy. I've waited for this moment so long, but it happened at the right appointed time. So I just want to ask the Lord to help me to keep faithful and to hold on to him. As I understand, I want to stand in the truth and nothing but the truth. Because now I understand present truth, I want to hold on to it. So I just want to sing a verse of To God Be the Glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So love be the word that he gave us his son, who healed and his life and the torment for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God to see my daughter baptized today. Amen. It is so wonderful because all these years she has been studying. And then um, when Pastor Emmanuel didn't return back the last time, she said, when is Pastor coming back? When is Pastor coming back? I said, I don't know. But then when Andrea phoned, and says, oh, Pastor said, we'd like you to make some bread. <laughs> so I said, okay. And, um, and she said, baptism. And I said, oh, I wish our pastor is coming back. He's going to have baptism. She said, I want to be baptized. Amen. And so, praise God. Amen. I thank God for his hand in her life. Amen. And I just want to thank God that he uses pastor to be Christ to baptize her today. Amen. Thank, Amen. thanks. Amen. <laughs> Anyone else? That's it. All the time. Okay, well, thank you very much for your testimony, and I give God all the glory. Amen. Now, I ask you to uh, remember me in your prayers uh, as I uh, travel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try my best for the next uh, few days I have left here in London to try to rest. Yes. My body is asking me for some rest mm -hmm. uh, before I start traveling again, because I have a long journey ahead of me. I have... Trinidad, Grenada, Jamaica, uh, Mexico. Yeah. No, no, Mex I have to go. <laughs> Mexico, and then, and then U.S., and then from U.S., I have to go back to Mexico again, uh, and then to uh, Portugal at, at the end of the month, because we're having a camp meeting in Portugal. The... Uh, the first week of August, so you are all invited if you're able to make it. First, no, you can cancel that. <laughs> Where in Jamaica? You'll be back. Oh, okay, so you'll join us in uh, uh, Portugal. Oh, great, great, great. Okay. 
So for the rest of you, uh, if you are able, think about it, you have two months, two months left to go. For, uh, first week of August, and we're going to need some foot soldiers. What do I mean by that? One of the reasons why we plan the camp meeting for the first week of August in Portugal is because the Pope will be there. The Pope will be in Portugal, <laughs> Lisbon, Portugal. So we already have lots of books ready. We're going to order more, uh, like Great Controversy, for example, uh, ready to, uh, to go pass out. Uh, we, we, yeah, in Portuguese. We have it in English as well, but we have uh, more of them in Portuguese. Uh, you know, because, you know, we, we, we want to give the Pope a gift, you know, uh, and, and our Catholic friends over there as well. So uh, mark your calendar. If, if, you, if you are busy at that day, make sure you open it, keep it clean, and, and join us. Uh, and let us know ahead of time, by the way, because we do have accommodation, uh, but it is on uh, first come, first serve. Otherwise... You're welcome to stay in a tent because it will be warm. It will be really warm uh, in August in Portugal. And right now, it's already hot over there. And so uh, in August, it will be about, you know, it will be even hotter. So we have tents. We have family tents for you. If you cannot bring a tent, we do have family tents that can sleep three, four, five people uh, easy. So let us know if you prefer to camp. Uh, or if you need an indoor accommodation. All right, so you've got two months. Pray about it and let us know. With that in mind, let's have a word of prayer before we dismiss. Loving Father God, which art in heaven, we want to thank you again for making it possible for us to be here today. And as I shared a moment ago, and as you heard, um, this was not the plan, but you had a plan. And Father, I know you have a plan for each one of us here. And I pray, Father, whatever that plan is, that you would help us, reveal it to us, and help us to know it for sure and to follow it. Because we know that if we are following the plan that you have for each one of us, we will have the peace that passeth all understanding. There are some that are sick among us, Lord. I pray in a special way that you would touch them. Uh, that you restore their health, including mine. I'm not feeling 100% well. I pray that you'll be with me. Be with each one of us as we're getting ready to leave this place. Give us traveling mercy. Um, and I pray, if not here, if, if not in Portugal, if not somewhere else on this earth, I pray that we will meet together again in the heavenly kingdom, in what a day that will be. Forgive us of all our sins, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.